السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم Last week in the khutbah I talked about the current situation of the Muslim ummah and I know that khutbahs like that are hard to hear because we don't like to be reminded of where we're at. So this week I wanted to ask a series of questions to help us start thinking differently. And the question I really want to start with today is فَإِنَّ تَثَبُونَ So where are we going? And the reason I want to ask questions is because the Quran is a call for answering, for asking questions. The Quran is a call for asking questions that matter, asking questions to shake off our heedlessness, and questions that enable us to discover eternity through the passing of this temporary world. So without these questions that, the, that Allah Azawajal asks, asks us in the Qur'an, we would be blocked from discovering the immense opportunities that are truly before us, individually and collectively. Now in order to ask the right questions, we need guidance from the one who is all-knowing, the one who encompasses all knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And divine guidance is never blind. It always gives us a beautiful reminder that we can test and we can confirm. So the Quran asks us to use reason and experience. Sometimes the questions that Allah asks us are implicit. And we live sometimes the questions that matter even if we were unable to clarify them clearly. 
really, ya ikhwani, as long as we follow the Quranic cues to engage the meaning of our lives and to discover the signs of the universe, then we'll always have answers to the questions that we ask. We're like a baby who preserves in crying out, even though the baby has no idea how her needs or his needs will be satiated. But yet they keep crying out in hopes that someone will answer their question, will give them a bottle, will change their, their diaper. Those are the same questions we're going to ask today. They don't really have the greatest of answers. And I hope to elucidate a great answer for the question I'm going to ask. But it really truly is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer these questions in our lives through experience. And the question I want to ask us all today is which favors of our Lord do we deny? And there's reasons why I wanted to ask this question. Because when we hear this ayah, the first thing we think about is our physical bodies, our hands, our eyes, our senses. We think about the greater universe and how it expands. We think of all these things, but I think we really neglect the answer that is there before us, that most of us don't think of. And I would venture to guess that most of us deny the favor of our Lord that is our corporeal self. The physical, emotional being that walks about the earth in humble submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would venture to guess that most of us haven't looked deeply at ourselves. And we haven't separated the false self from the authentic self. So the false self is that facade that we wear daily, that uniform of conformity the self that we really want people to see, the self that we project to other people, the self we pretend to be. And the authentic self is the self that stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The authentic self has no facade, no mask of piety. It's just the real us, who we really are when we're alone. Now I say that we deny this favor from Allah because the idea of searching inward for most of mankind, it lies dormant, undiscovered, smothered in a need to be cool, to fit in, to not rock the boat. One of the greatest sages of Islam, he said, for me to be a saint, for me to be a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that I have to know myself. Therefore, the problem with sanctity and salvation is a fact, the problem of finding out who I am and discovering my true self. My true self, the self that stands in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the self that causes faith to flow through my life, the self that is in love with the divine, so it strives for closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one would ask, what if my true self was evil? What if my true self was a, was a criminal? What if my true self was a murderer? I would answer, that can't possibly be your true self. Your true self is the self that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the self that brings you further away. So the true self is the self that is absent of ego, absence of greed, absence of lust and only has the positive characteristics that bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything else that we're doing that's not that, is us being false. Is us not being true, not being real to who we really are. Does that make sense? You follow me on that? Okay. It's a psych psychological thing I'm trying to make into a, a point with Islamic text. So we'll see how that works out for me. So to find our true selves, we have to undo the layers of unauthentic nonsense 
and find the real being who strives to rid themselves of hatred, fear, evil, and surround themselves with hope, love, and compassion. It's as if we wound bandages around ourselves to hide who we are. And we'll have these moments, especially the youth, when they finally find their friends find out they're Muslim, or they have to fast during the school year, or they have to pray, and it's as if some of the bandage has come off, and now they have to show their real self to their friends, and they're afraid of it. And this happens to people who don't want to wash their feet in the sink, wash their feet in the sink at work, who don't want to find, ask for a place to pray, who don't ask for Juma off. They have wound themselves in a bandage to hide their real selves from people. So we have to be willing to change that. If we're going to bring about any kind of change within the Muslim Ummah, it has to start here with us, individually being willing to change. Change from a life of projecting piety and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to one of actually being in communion with Allah, one of actually being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of not just talking about belief, but of actually having faith. And for most people, when they hear the word belief and they hear the word faith, they say they're the same meaning. They mean the same thing. They really don't mean the same thing. Faith is a belief that is built around confidence. Meaning you're confident that what I'm saying is going to be a reality. Faith is what drove the Sahaba to where they were. Faith in that Muhammad وسلم, was a prophet and Allah was one God. That's what motivated them to become greater. Belief is an opinion that is held by us. I believe Donald Trump is an idiot. I don't have faith in the fact that Donald Trump is an idiot. You see the difference in those two? They're very close, but the meanings are way different. So we have to move from people who are acting that they have faith to people who are truly living faith. Because there's a difference between professing Islam and living Islam. There's a difference between professing La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and living La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And that difference might seem minute, it might seem incredibly small, but there's a huge difference in the reality with Allah from believing it and having faith in it. So we have to be willing to change. And Allah reminds us that inna Allah la yughayru ma bi kawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. That Allah does not change the condition of a people until they're willing to change themselves. Until they're willing to try to be something different. Change is that one thing that everybody wants but everybody's afraid of. Change is the very nature of the universe. The nature of the natural world in which we live in is nothing but change. Day changes into night. Seasons change. Everything changes. Molecules break down. We age. We gain knowledge. Everything changes, including our opinions. And if our opinions aren't changing, this means we're not learning. We're not growing anymore. And there's no word in the English language, Gresham. It has to have a prefix attached to it. You're either progressing, dressing, or you're regressing, or you're transgressing. Nobody is ever gressing. There's no such thing as stagnation. So either we're moving forward, or we're moving backwards. I said this in the second khutbah last week, so you guys, most of you weren't here. But I said, and I'm going to say this in this khutbah, we spend so much time looking at our past that we forgot to build a future. The Muslim Ummah has spent so much time looking at our past that we forgot to build a future. And for a lot of us individual Muslims, we spend so much time looking at our past that we're forgetting to build a future. 
The whole idea of all of this is to build a bridge to our future without building a wall between tradition, without building a wall between our parents, without building a wall between religion, but to build a bridge to a future. The biggest obstacle between us and change is us. There's not a global conspiracy designed to keep us down. The ones who are conspiring against us are us. By following the false promises of our egos, or neglecting the true promises that Allah gives us. Inna wa'dallahu haqq. The promises of Allah are true. The promises of our egos and of our false self are not real. They're illusions. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahlihi wa sahbihi wa salam taslimi li qadri adhima. So really the question comes in that how do we begin to love ourselves? To truly love us as individuals. To love this person. To stop having negative thoughts about ourselves, that we're doomed and that we're ignorant and that we're stupid and that we're less than and all of these things we tell ourselves. And the reason I bring this up because we have to start realizing that self-love and self-care is not selfishness, but it's actually required by our faith. How can we have love for our brothers and sisters if we don't have love for ourselves? How can we love the Prophet وسلم, more than we love anybody else if we don't know what love of ourself even is? The concept of love begins with loving yourself. There's that old adage that's used throughout the West that you cannot love somebody until you love yourself. And I believe truly to the amount of counseling that I've done within the Muslim Ummah over the last 15 years of my life, that there is a huge issue with us thinking that we're okay, that we're good enough, that we're not these horrible human beings that are regulated to hellfire, we can never come out of that. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of Muslims dwell, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually, that they're not enough. So how do we begin to start loving ourselves? How do we begin to start thinking that we're okay? And it's a very nuanced conversation that I'll continue tonight in the Friday night class, inshallah. But I want to talk about a, uh, the story of Jalut and Talut and Dawood alayhi salam. And if you go and you read the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, he talks about this a little bit, about... Once Dawood alayhi salam is going out to fight Jalut, Talut, he puts him in his armor because he wants him to look kingly. He wants him to look like a man who has honor. But when Dawood alayhi salam puts on the uniform of Talut, he realizes that it doesn't fit him. It's not his. It's loose and it doesn't feel comfortable and it's cutting him and it doesn't feel right. So in a moment of inspiration, Dawood realizes that he is enough for Allah. That Dawood is strong enough, is the best candidate to go out and fight Jalut. And he takes off that uniform that Saul or Talut had put on him. He takes it off and he walks out there as a young shepherd boy with a slingshot. Because he was enough. We try to package each other into what you have to be to be ideal Muslim. You have to be the ideal Muslim. And to be the ideal Muslim, you have to wear this uniform. You have to dress like this. You have to be like this. You have to act just like this. And anything less than that perfection is wrong. But Allah tells us clearly in the story of Dawood that what Talut thought was perfection, 
What Talut thought equaled piety. What Talut thought equaled devastate, would devastate uh, Jalut, would devastate Goliath, was not what Allah saw. You follow me on that? That David was enough. Dawood as himself was enough. So the first thing we have to do to love ourselves is we have to let go of this illusion of being perfect. We're not. None of us are. The only perfect person is in his grave in Medina. Everybody else has struggled. Everybody else has fallen short of the bar. Everybody else has failed in some way. So once we realize that we're not perfect, once we realize that we're never going to be perfect, that we're always going to be works in progress, then we can stop beating ourselves up, then we can stop calling ourselves names. We can stop killing our own selves. Can we move forward, inshallah ta'ala? We can start to overcome the negative beliefs about ourselves. Many people have trouble letting go of those negative thoughts that they've given. I've spoken several times about when you tell your kid they're stupid. Like if you tell your child, that's stupid. Oh, that's dumb. It takes 20 times of you telling them that they're smart for them to forget that one time you said they were dumb. So all of us carry around negative thoughts about ourselves. All of us have scars or we weren't good enough at something. I remember when I was learning Tajweed and uh, the first teacher I had beat me up. <laughs> Not physically, I was a full grown man, I could have taken him in a fair fight. But he beat me up like emotionally, mentally, spiritually, he beat me up. He made me feel as if I was dumb, that I could never learn it. That it was something that was beyond my capability. The second Tajweed teacher I found taught me to love my mistakes, taught me to work harder, taught me to love the Quran, not to be afraid of it, that I wasn't going to be perfect, but I could try my hardest to find perfection. And that opened up the Quran to me. Instead of being something I was afraid of going to, something I was afraid of reading, something I was afraid of having contact with, it became the life stream of my heart. I was no longer worried about perfection. So I could forget about those negative things. And that caused me to do the third thing, which is to rewrite my internal script. To realize I'm not a horrible human being. To realize I'm not dumb. To realize I'm not stupid. To realize that I do have connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To realize that my prayer is more than just a physical motion, but it's a reality of connection with God. I had to rewrite all that. So what I'm saying to us today, and then I'm going to finish right now, is if we really want to change the Muslim Ummah, if we really want the conditions in Yemen, in Egypt, in Syria, in Iraq, in Kashmir, in Mali, in Senegal, and just keep naming countries to change, it starts here, individually, with each and every one of us, trying to be the best version of us that we can be. It doesn't start with slogans. It doesn't start with chantings. It doesn't start with demonstrations and protests. It doesn't start with overthrowing governments. It starts with each and every one of us purifying ourselves, realizing we're never going to be perfect. We're always going to be flawed creations of Allah. In a khalaq al insana, da'ifa. The creation of men is weak, it's weakness. Then learning to accept our fragility, accept our weaknesses, accept our sinful nature, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and allow us to move closer to Him. This is how we save the Muslim Ummah. Years ago, I watched a documentary about how to save bees. How to save bees, because bees are dying off in huge numbers and we need bees to continue to live on this planet. And the solution was simple. Every person, take one hive. Have one hive of bees. If we want to save the Muslim Ummah, the situation is simple. The solution is simple. All of us have to be the best version of us. 
Not the best version that someone tells us we have to be. Not the best version of somebody who says you have to be like this. Because Allah tells us very clearly, فَتَقُلَّهَا مَسْتَتَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as much as you can. Not as much as your neighbor can. Not as much as the guy down the street can. Not as much as your parents can. But fear Allah as much as you can. And wallahi ya akhwani, if we start to fear Allah as much as we can, our wives and our children will start to fear Allah as much as they can. And when the world starts to look that way, then we'll see a difference. But we have to start by loving ourselves enough to work on ourselves. Some announcements. We need to, um, our sister Shaheen Waqar passed away in Pakistan unexpectedly. And uh, may Allah give her, uh, give her Jenna Fardaus, give her family ease. Tonight we have uh, the Friday night class from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we'll be discussing more of this idea of the true self and finding who we really are. Give generously to the masjid. Boys club is tonight, I think from five to six. Um, I had a whole list of announcements, but I forgot them. So have a good weekend, I guess, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah Azza wa make us people who follow the Quran to where it illuminates our heart. Who follow the Quran to a place where we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us and not against us. That we look deeply into ourselves and we see our scars and we see our wounds and we work on them to heal them so that we can be better versions of ourselves tomorrow than we are today. That we look at the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we see that it's a sunnah of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love of the human condition and love of humanity and then we implement that into our lives. May Allah make the sunnah of his Prophet the illuminated path that leads us all to Jannah. May Allah azawajal forgive us all of our sins and all of our transgressions and allow us to enter Jannah Fardaus with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah azawajal heal the Muslim ummah from the many wounds that it has, the many wounds that it faces every day. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal us from the wounds that we feel every day. And may he make this religion of La ilaha illallah Muhammad al-Rasulullah, the religion that truly awakens our heart, that truly moves our every motion, that truly moves our every thought, so that we become people of faith, people who truly have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and live that faith in all of our actions. Anything that I have said that is false is obviously from me, and anything that I said that is real is obviously from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وآخر دعونا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وقامة الصلاة Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shadu la ilaha illallah, Shadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayala salah, hayala al-falah, Katka mati salah, katka mati salah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah. استقيم ويرحمني ويرحمكم الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك ممن تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان 
أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار الله أكبر سمع الله 